Did you ever wake up one morning wondering just how many bats are there in the world? Well, <laughs> the number's pretty staggering, I can assure you of that. But more importantly, there are about 1,100 different species of bats. And that represents 20% of all the mammals that call our planet home. Here in Alberta, we have nine different species of bats. As you're about to find out, they play a critical role in our ecosystem. When it gets to this time of day, most of us are thinking about heading home. But on this night, a small but enthusiastic group of adventurers have gathered at Lois Hole Provincial Park for a unique outing. They're going on a bat walk. Now you might be asking yourself, just how do you see a bat at night? The answer is rather simple. You don't. You listen for them. Or rather, a special monitor will indicate when a bat has passed over your head. Bat detectors essentially just bring these really high frequencies and brings it down to a frequency that we can hear. And so it's a few different styles. We have ones that we can actually see the sonogram, so the little kind of picture of what their echolocation call looks like. Oh, here's a bat. So we can tell they've got these nice echolocation calls all the way through. So why all this interest in small nocturnal mammals? Well, it turns out bats are incredibly important for our environment. So they play a really important role. They consume farm pests, forest pests, and these pesky mosquitoes and others. There have been more recent estimates in the United States where there's a lot more agriculture, warmer climate there, and bats act as natural pesticide for them. And they, they reckon that the bats are saving billions of dollars in the economy by having this role in controlling pests. A single bat can eat up to 6,000 mosquitoes in one evening. So having these little guys around is a real benefit to us. That said, there are some real threats to Alberta's bat population. White nose syndrome heads the list. It's a fungus that grows in caves, and so when bats are hibernating, their immune systems are down. The fungus begins to grow on the bats. When the bats are irritated, they arouse. Unfortunately, there's no food for them. They've got stores of fat. They're like little, think about bears or grizzly bears. And so they have to get through the whole winter on this fat, but they've woken up and they don't have any food. So they essentially starve to death. In eastern United States and Canada have had 98% mortality in caves. The estimates are as high as 7 million that have died so far. So if it gets here, our cave dwelling bats are in serious trouble. White nose syndrome is already confirmed in Washington state. So biologists feel it's not if, but when the disease reaches Alberta. To better educate Albertans about bats and bat habitat, the province has partnered with the Alberta Community Bat Program. So what we're hoping people will do is contribute their own observations to a growing database of similar observations across the province. And as more and more people can contribute, we can start to find some patterns in the data uh, that'll help us improve management of bats in the province. Providing support to homeowners who may have to deal with bats is another key area the program is focused on. Perhaps no better example can be found than this historic home located in Spruce Grove, which has been part of the Nelson family for over a hundred years. Well, we've always known there are bats in the house. They would never really bothered us because it's in the attic of the third floor, which um, the third floor was never occupied, so it was just storage area. So the, the bats themselves kept to themselves and we kept to ourselves and everything went along for probably a hundred and some years. With the restoration, I needed to remove some of the ceiling and uh, get at some of the rafters in there. So unfortunately, the bats had to go. Key for the Nelson family was the desire not to harm the bats. So they reached out to the Alberta Community Bat Program. So what we talked about right up front was that the best way to deal with these guys is to let them leave on their own. Early fall to late fall, we start seeing a lot of motion moving out of these buildings. And a lot of these bats that we're dealing with in this species in particular is heading off to cave hibernaculas, where they'll overwinter away from their summer roosting locations. So we want to really avoid any times with the breeding season where there's young around. We want to make sure that they're healthy and happy. We don't want to just kick them on out and hope for the best. So we want to give them the best chance possible to uh, keep them moving. Yeah, you can see the entry point up on the top, right between the uh, uh, roof truss pieces. Filling in all the access points where the bats could get into the home was a big job. To offset the loss of this prime roosting location, the Nelsons erected a couple of bat houses. And when it comes to these odd-looking boxes, there are a few things you should know. 
Well, the longer one that you see is called the rocket box, and then the one that's a little bit wider is called uh, maternity or uh, multi-chambered bath house. These are the ones that we are recommending. Um, they have multiple bath holes within them, which is giving just different uh, temperature gradients within the actual bath house. So we suggest setting bath houses up in areas that get about 10 hours of direct sunlight. So these boxes can get really, really warm. It gives the bats some options of uh, what temperature kind of they, they want to be in. All bat houses can enhance habitat and are obviously very useful when a colony is evicted from a building. Natural roofs like old trees are still the best option. So if you have some of those old trees on your property, maybe think twice about removing them. They could be prime bat homes. Hey, if you'd like more information about what you can do to offer support to Alberta's bat population, then I strongly urge you to check out the Alberta Community Bat Program. Till next time, everyone, I'm Michael Short. Let's go outdoors.